We have already mentioned that for a device to work successfully, as the manufacturer had designed it to, a device driver or software patch has to be installed. Windows has a number of device drivers already built in, but it's limited. This means when a new device is installed, Windows will first attempt to find its own driver. Failing this, it will prompt the user to install one. In this video lesson, we shall look on how to manage device drivers, what happens when the device is disabled, when Windows finds a new device and installs its own drivers, and how to install a third-party device driver. All the device drivers are managed in the Device Manager, and you can access this through the Control Panel. Alternatively, you can right click on my computer and from the drop down menu click on properties. Looking down this list we can see a number of categories. The first category is called computer and if we double click on this we shall find a driver called ACPI Uniprocessor PC. This driver is used for the CPU. The next category is called Disk Drives and includes a driver called WDC and this is used for the hard drive. Notice how this has been included in the Disk Drive category despite the fact that we normally refer to this device as a hard drive. So we should be aware that these categories are just a broad description of the devices. The next category is for the display adapters. And in the next, the DVD CD-ROM drives. And if we right click on this driver, we shall find a drop down menu. And from this, we have several options. We can update drivers, disable, uninstall, scan for hardware changes and show its properties. First let's look at disabling the drivers and see the effect. If we open my computer we will find two drives, which is the hard drive and DVD-ROM drive. Back to the device manager and we shall disable the DVD-ROM drive. So we right click on the driver, then click on disable. We shall click on yes, we do want to disable this device. Notice the red cross that has appeared over the device, which indicates that it now has been disabled. If we right click on it again, we can check its properties. Notice the device status. This device is disabled. So now if we check my computer, the DVD-ROM drive as expected is missing. Why would we want to disable a device? We could have a computer that is accessed by the public and you may not want them to access the CD or DVD drive, since this could be a virus threat. So we could disable the device like this and deny them access to the device manager so they would not be able to enable it again. This can also be useful for fault finding. Let's say you had just fitted a new device and it failed to work. This could be due to the item being faulty or it conflicting resources with another device. We shall see in a moment what we mean by conflicting resources. Let's re-enable the DVD. The wizard will start, so just click on next. And after a short delay, the DVD has returned. Here we shall insert a USB mouse and see the effect on the device manager. But first we shall open the category Call Mice and Other Point Devices. As we can see, the only driver that is listed is the Microsoft PS2 mouse, as we have connected one before this video lesson. Now we shall insert the USB mouse. First a new device was detected. Then the device driver is installed. Finally, the device manager is updated. 
so this device was detected by Windows and it used its own drivers. An important point here is that you can have more than one device in a category. You may think that there could be a conflict if more than one driver is installed and this can happen if both devices were to use the same resources. The best way of explaining what resources are is displaying the resources of the communication port 1. All devices connected to a computer uses some type of resources such as RAM. Here we can see that the communication port uses an I.O. or input output between the values of 03F8 to 03FF. In other words, each time we use the communication port 1, information is stored at this point. This means if an application uses the communication port 1, it accesses the device manager that tells it where to look and store data. If another device was to use the same I.O., then a conflict would occur and one or both devices would fail. Although the mice do not show the resources, they too must use different ones, and all this is handled automatically by the device manager. Notice also a new category called USB Human Interface Device. If we installed some other device, such as touchscreens, then this too will be included here. Let's remove the USB mouse and see the effect. First, the category called USB Human Interface Device has been removed and so has the extra driver in the mouse category. Here is another important point. The device manager will normally only install drivers for the devices connected to the computer. In other words, disconnect the device and the driver will be removed from the device manager's list. This does not mean it will be uninstalled unless we tell it to. Let's close down Windows and install a further device one that Windows does not support or have a driver for. As soon as Windows restarts, a message is displayed, found new hardware, and it prompts us to look for the hardware installation disk and gives us three options. Before we continue, let's check the device manager. Notice a new category has appeared called other devices. This happens when a device is connected that is not supported by Windows drivers. Also notice the yellow exclamation mark that has appeared over the device. This marker indicates problems with the device. It may not have the right driver, as in this case, be conflicting with another device, or it may have a fault. Let's check the properties. Here we can see the device is not configured correctly. In other words, the device does not have the correct drivers installed and will not work as the manufacturer has intended it to. Most devices are supplied with a driver, in some form such as CD or DVD. To install them normally means inserting the disk into the drive and it automatically runs. This is fine for the most part, but if the driver does not install as it should have, then we should have the knowledge on how to do this manually. Although at first sight this may seem complicated, it is not, as long as we know the model of the device and the operating system. First we shall insert the CD, and in this case, it will automatically run. The model of the device we just installed is TLWN781ND, so we could just click on this and the driver will be installed. Let's browse the disk. We know the model is TLWN781ND, so we can double click on this folder. We are looking for the driver software, so we can double click on the folder called Driver Files. Here we can see other folders which are the drivers for other operating systems. So if we were using Windows Vista 32-bit, then we would click on that folder. In our example, we are using Windows XP 32-bit, and we can see here a folder called Windows 2000 
XP, and also a folder called Windows XP 64-bit. We should be aware that there is a world of difference between Windows XP 32-bit and 64-bit. In this case we shall use the Windows 2000 XP. Naturally if we were using Windows 2000 then we would also use the drivers found in this folder. So here's the driver information. All we need to do is point Windows in the right direction. Let's close the Windows and return to updating the driver. So we click on reinstall driver. We are now back to our three options. We could allow Windows to search for the driver but we shall guide it to them. Since we do not want Windows to connect to the internet we shall select no not this time. Here we have the option to install the software automatically or install it from a list. So we shall select this. Once again the wizard is prompting us do we want to search or install the driver manually. By default the first option is selected so we shall remove the tick then select include this location. Once again we could allow Windows to search this location for the drivers but we shall select browse. We know the drivers are on the D drive so we shall select this. We know the model is TLWN781ND. We also know the drivers are in the folder called driver files. And finally we can select the correct driver for our operating system in the folder called Windows 2000 XP. But before we do this notice the OK button. It is at this time greyed out. Now let's choose the folder Windows 2000 XP. Notice how the OK button has now become highlighted indicating Windows has now located some drivers. They may or may not be the correct ones but Windows will only know this when it attempts to install them. Notice this message. This software has not passed the Windows logo testing. This is the process where the manufacturer of the device sends the software driver to Microsoft for testing. Microsoft checks it for compatibility and stability. It's successful and receives a Microsoft signature. In many cases, manufacturers of some computer devices do not submit the software for approval. This does not mean that it is unsuitable for Microsoft operating system. Providing the software is supplied from a trusted source, as in this example, we can continue with the installation. This message may appear several times during the installation period. Once installed, you should find the device with no exclamation marks or red crosses against it, as in this example.